Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Hearts, Uniting God's Spirit Hugs. And I just want to say thank you so much for listening. God has some very inspiring words for you today. And I just want you to sit back and really feel his embrace because he loves you and, and we love you. This hug is for you, for you to feel our hearts and commune together and really be touched. And it wouldn't be possible for this hug to be heard around the world if it didn't and wasn't heard by you first. So thank you again for listening, for sharing, and for being perfectly you. And let's just take a moment, take a nice deep breath. You can close your eyes if you'd like. And God, thank you for bringing us together to embrace and community and love with your hugs. And bless everyone listening now and forevermore. And amen. So if you don't already know me, my name is Antika Libby, and my mission is to share the three tools God uses to communicate with each of us with you and teach you how to dust them off and tune them up so you can see and hear his calling for you and walk in confidence and purpose and perfect health for the rest of your life. And you can learn about the programs that I offer online and coaching and my books and everything, and you can get a free gift immediately at fithappychristians.com. But on hugs each week, or nearly each week, I'm honored to link arms with amazing people who have witnessed God's hand in their life, um, you know, all around and are willing to step forward and really share his embrace of hope, love, and faith with you and with the world and really open up to their experiences. And today I'm going to, to continue to just shine out God's love and healing and miraculous hands with one of my favorite guests. She's, she's I think, the most, the guest that's been on the show most often. And she's a mentor and friend of mine. And the first time we've done a Skype interview, and so this is Dr. D. Adeo Moses, and she's a visionary, she's an author, she's a life strategist, an educator, an ordained minister with a doctorate specializing in holistic life and spiritual counseling. So Dr. D. is the founder of Life Empowerment, Inc., a business and life purpose development organization. She's also the founder and spiritual leader of Healing Center for Christ International, and she is the author of the, actually quite a few acclaimed books, but one of them is You Are Enough, The 12 Healing Steps to Your Health, Wealth, and Happiness, Healing Your Life with Prayers and Meditation, and today Dee is going to share with us how she really, God touched her to find those 12 steps, and how she's sharing them you know, beyond her book today. So Dee, welcome, hugs, and oh, thank you welcome. for being here. Thank you. I, I'm so excited to be here. You know, I, I love being in your company, and I just love sharing with you. So it's really an honor to be here. You know how special you are to me. You know, and I want to say thank you also for all the work you do. Your light shines so bright. And I'm honored to be one of your friends. I'm honored to be here with you today. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so I read your book over a year ago. It's amazing. It's been over a year. And I just remember thinking over and over again, this woman has it. Like, she, she's just dead on. You're so right. Um, the unity, the oneness, the the perfect I am, the being yeah. of God that you exclaim and talk about in, in the book, You Are Enough, is profound and, and just rings so true in every cell of my body. I kept saying, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I know when we're writing books and as authors and speakers and much of the community that we're speaking to is, as well, we, we get inspired and we learn things. And, and so maybe you can just share with us a couple of the 12 steps and then how God led you to know enough in order to trust yourself and trust him enough to write as an authority on the matter. Well, first of all, I want to say that by the time you're writing a book, you know, it's really like um, a light has 
you know, there's a light that just comes up, you know, as if you've been in darkness and suddenly somebody will switch on the light and you can see. Yeah. So it comes to you like that in terms of, wow, you know, it, it's really stepping out and taking your own rightful place. So you've always known whatever it is you're supposed to write about. You have just been very busy doing other things and have not had time to be still and step into that greatness that you, you are. So what happened in my own case was that over the years before I wrote this book, I've been through so much. And then when I came out of the divorce, the, 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 the you know, losing all that I had, like going bankrupt and being a single mother, all those, shall I say, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all those many blessings in disguise. Many blessings. <laughs> many blessings. So when I came out of that, and then I started my journey. I remember even before becoming a minister, the, the way I went to the church where I finally became a minister there, that it was just like divinely guided. And after that, I went on just teaching and preaching and training. I didn't think of writing a book. Then one day, I think it was in one of my classes, the word came to me about, you know, I was the one telling somebody who was, you know, asking me so many questions and said, you are enough, you know? I said, oh, what do you mean by that? And then I started explaining what I meant by you are enough. And after that, it was like somebody switched the light on that this is not the only person that needs to know about that. This is just a sign for you to teach the world that they're enough. And before I even talk about the steps, I want to share what happened just last, this last weekend. Okay. I had dinner with a um, good friend of mine and her husband. He, you know, very successful man and some of their family friends. 70 plus year old man and we were talking about god and spirit and all this good stuff in the end after when we left they brought me home and i went upstairs and i ran give gave him my book and when he took that book and looked at it he asked me he said are you saying he said this you is that me i said yes he said you mean I'm enough? I said, yes. And he looked at me again and said, you really talking about me? Ah. Look, I can still feel it up till now. This is a successful man in the world, has money and everything, but it was obvious that the deeper sense of belonging, of who he truly is, had been missing. And that day showed him something, just that little light, the little connection that he had been looking for. And it was so special to me. And that's what we need. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know if I know anybody that hasn't struggled with, I'm not enough. Yes. the belief of I'm not enough and, and breaking that belief. And, you know, it boils down to self love and faith. Yes. Um, this morning in, in meditation, God really gave me a, a passage about, well, in Romans, I believe Romans nine, like around 33 and, and, um, it, it was just, you know, it's all about faith. It's not about the works that's going to make you enough, that's going to make you righteous. Like Christ already died, and and for for that, and we don't have to do anything but walk in that pure faith, of, and, and God will not shame us. And just walking in that faith. And when you spoke just now, it just hit me again as a, we all just need to know that it's not how much money we make. It's not how 
how many people I reached last week with this hug. You know, it's not uh, all the stats and the figures or even how the world outside of us, the other people perceive us. It is this knowing that just by being, we are enough. Yes. And, and we can assume that everybody else thinks that they're enough and we're the only ones that don't. But really, that's not the case. Even the wealthy man thinks that yeah. he's not enough yet. And he's 70, you know. So it's such a powerful and important message. It's a big weight that you get to carry. <laughs> <laughs> To teach but you the know world what? That enough. I just if anyone love can it. do it, you can. I love it. And the reason why I love the message is because it's simple. So there's nothing that is more special than you giving somebody that thought this was a big, 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 big thing to do. And you let them see how simple it is. They will really have that deep breath is like, oh my God. And the first thing that I say about being enough is that it is a spiritual journey. It's being on a spiritual path. The more you know about God, the more you know about yourself and the more you know that you are enough. The more you allow yourself to understand and allow God to be God in your life, the more you know you are enough. The more you walk the talk, the more you leave the spiritual laws that are out there, the golden rules of life, the more you know you are enough. Because it is that total understanding of who God is and the possibilities of God That is where your confidence, that is where your faith is. So you cease to think of yourself or have confidence in your own power. And you have that in God. So when you say Say that one more time, (laughs) you cease to have confidence in what you can do, your own power, and you have total confidence in what God can do through you. So there's no reason any one of us to say, you know what? I'm only 50% confident. You are still talking about yourself. There's no reason for you to say, you know what? Uh, um, I don't have much self-confidence. You are talking about yourself. The day you start talking about God, when you say, I am, immediately God comes in. So what are you going to do? I am 100% confident. Then you have removed yourself from the equation and you have just become a vessel to be used for great things. So you don't need to worry about how it's going to be done. You need to listen and be told what to do and you just follow what to do. So that the whole idea of the oneness with God, that is where the job is. And Jesus really was so phenomenal when in the last days that that prayer that he made about, you know, Father Lord, so that they may be one with you as we are one. I see that that is the prayer we need to hold on to. Yeah, this is my favorite. John, John, John. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite. I, I, uh, yes. Well, yeah. I have that. It is what it is for me is having the giver of the gift instead of looking for the gift, instead of looking for the money, instead of looking for the love, instead of looking for the things. I just go for the owner of it. Uh-huh. Yeah, the single focus. I just go for it. So when I'm one with the owner that has everything, that is my birthright already. So I'm not taking what is not my own. And the one that I'm going for, I'm going with, is the one that already looked at me and created me and said, oh, she is good and very good. So if I am already good and very good, 
That is all I need to believe in. That is who I need to trust. I don't need to worry about the man-made things that are distractions. The more I can focus on the truth of who I am, the less I will be focusing on the lies of who I'm not. Yeah. So I know that there's hangups, or at least there, there are for me. Um, when, when I'm out of the place of, of stillness and the knowingness, and I'm around people that don't live from that place of knowingness, that are still in the works, good people, loving people, amazing people, but are striving to, um, to fill their enoughness. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I get around those people, I, I get hung up and feeling my own enoughness because, of course, we're all one. So I, I congeal energetically and I feel heart to heart with them. How do you stand in this purpose when you're, um, and, and this knowing when you're around people that don't know it for themselves? So you can then, instead of commingling, you can then be the example to raise them off to their own enoughness. Okay. Do you understand that question? Of, of course. Of okay. Course. This is a big one. Like this question is an incredible question and it's a big one. So I'm going to really explain it. The first thing is that we have to stop being God in other people's lives. And when you meet people, and the way to do that, and that actually happens a lot with husband and wife, parents and their children, and family members, you know, like your sister or my sister, or, and all of us, we all suffer from this. We love them so much and we want something for them. We have it in our brain as to where they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to be doing. And because they're not doing that, we think they are not enough. You see, being enough for me is different from being enough for you. Because my creator and your creator, God has created me as a manifestation and created you as another manifestation. So your journey is different from my journey. And I have, if I really truly believe that God knows what God is doing and God doesn't leave anyone out. Because when I see someone and I think they should be where they are not, it means that I think God has left them out. And God hasn't. It's just that their journey is different from mine. I may see them in six months and they are the one looking at me and thinking, oh, you are not doing what you should be doing in a matter of six months. That's what I'm scared of. I'm scared of what they're perceiving me as. Um, which, which is just a new awareness that I have. I'm just like, I'm constantly like, what do you see me as? And no, the, then I feel, then I get into my, I'm not enough. I go into those worries that you were talking about earlier. Yes. The question is really is nothing to do with them, all to do with you and all to do with me. Because when you see them whole and complete as they are, you will not even feel the way you feel. Okay. So what you do, you see that, let's assume now that you see someone that is really going through, it could be financial issues. Okay. And you feel that if they could just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, those issues will be over. What you do at that point is that you tell yourself, or that's what I do, I tell myself, stop judging, first of all. Secondly, I see them as the child of God that they are, and I see them through the eyes of God. And I know God hasn't forgotten them. I know that their, their money, they are the ones that need to get to where the money, the money is, is provided for them. 
So the most I can do for them at that moment is wait for them to ask me. So if they don't ask me, I just take it that they are okay. If they, are, if they are not in a position to ask me, I then bless them with whatever I have. Let's say, you know, they, 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 I see that they really don't have food. When I'm going there, I will cook something really nice and I will just bless them there. But I will not talk about, do you know if you are supposed to do this, you didn't do it? Then I then say, you know, if there's anything else you want me to do, just let me know, okay? I, then I'll say something nice to them. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. And you know, this too shall pass. So if there's anything, just let me know. And they will feel that you respect them. Right. So showing that respect, that love, and being that service. Being that service seeing the need, being that service will reflect to them that they are enough. They are enough, yes. And in that... Reflect to you that you are enough. And in that is that mirror image reflecting back to the giver or the noticer that we too are enough. We too are enough. Because most of the time, what we see, the shortcomings we see in other people start from the shortcomings we see in ourselves yeah so if i see someone that i think that is not enough and they're not doing this for them to even be around me it is just to show me i still have some work to do in myself yeah which is usually the truth you know so what i need to do when i see that is to look in my own aspect of my life and say Okay, God, what next are we going to do? What next have you been trying to do through me that I yeah. have been oblivious of? I am so, able and I, I am ready. So we flip that from instead of being the judger to being the receiver of the judgment. How do you deal with it in that, in that sense? How do you stand then in the enoughness when somebody else and t without teaching them without judging back and teaching them yeah. don't be judgeful you know when receiving that those words or judgment mm -hmm. from family members whatever we're all going to get together for holidays right yeah the nitpicker is going to be there whoever that person is we all i think have a judge and a critic in the family how <laughs> Maybe not everybody, you lucky girls. <laughs> but, <laughs> everybody, because that's I started. Right. But when you're receiving, when you're on the receiving end, you're not doing the judging. How, how can you still stand in that place from feeling judged? Yeah, you we'll stop just judging. talk about the mirror of that. You stop judging yourself too. Okay. You are we'll not just saying, I'm that. not judging them. You are not judging yourself. So you appreciate yourself more. You pat yourself in the back. You look at what it is that you've done that are, that, that, that are good and don't wait for others to tell you. Tell yourself, girl, you're doing real good. You know, because they say that God doesn't punish us. We punish, we're too busy punishing ourselves. You, you, you've heard that quote before. They said God doesn't have time to punish us. He says, we are so busy punishing ourselves, and it is the truth. We judge ourselves, we knock ourselves on the head. What I have learned is that when you stop judging others, it is unbelievable how much love they feel from you. Because it is not what you say, it's what they can feel. And when you have that judgment in your mind, it comes up as an energy. So when you are, even when you say to them, oh, you know, your dress is nice. If at the mind, in your mind, you're already thinking, how can she wear this frumpy dress, you know? Or how, why, isn't this the one she wore last year? Something like that. If you are not sincere, it comes up like that. Yeah, definitely. You know, you so we have to walk. This, that's why I started with, this is a spiritual journey. It is not a one-time thing being enough. It is 
you really looking in the mirror and working on yourself and God, with God. You don't have to worry about other people because the job that your God has to do as the manifestation of you, that manifestation has no other job to do but accept with you. So nobody, that's why they say that there's enough for everyone. Because your God is not going to leave you and come to me. Because my God is the manifestation of me and has no other job. He's not coming to you. So I don't need to look at you and say that, oh, there's still something wrong somewhere or there's still something more to be done because what I'm doing is taking the job of your God. You and your God is like... We could have a whole different half hour all about just explaining that concept of... It is not a common concept. Yeah. Of, I mean, I can feel it. I, I, I like I, the tingles in my lips. I can feel the concept of um, even individualizing the manifestation of Christ within. Yeah. And, and it explains, you know, why, like... Um, St. Teresa of Aulon said that, that, you know, she found Christ inside, within, and, and so many great saints and people and, and teachers, you know, Christ is within, God is within, um, and, and that individual journey that we each have. And when we're not, when we're judging ourselves or accepting judgments from other people, we, um, what I'm hearing you say is, is we're actually kind of disconnecting from that truth that God is because God can't make mistakes. So we're either confirming it by accepting somebody else's judgments or by judging exactly. other people exactly. that we are disconnecting. And either way, the job is to just say, no, God didn't make any mistakes and stand firm root in that truth. Definitely. And that God doesn't leave and go and ebb and flow. Like God is constant within constant in you as you're, as, as you are, as, individual and as you are whole you remember that my story i'm sure I, i've told you this story before my experience with spirit that you know i was meditating i had so many questions and i the spirit told me that you know i i, I was just praying jesus please answer me you know jesus please i had this was a long time ago and i had all these questions and that particular day, I heard it very clearly. Said to me, Jesus said, can you let go your family? I said, yes. Can you let go your television, your radio, your children, your food, everything for me? I said, yes. He said, well, if you can do that, give me three days and I'll answer your questions. And after that meditation, I was shaking and I was thinking, oh my God, oh, I'm going to really shut down. And thank God my children were in college then and I was alone in the house. My husband was out of town. I was excited. I called all of them. Please don't call me. This is what is happening. The next three days I'm fasting, I'm praying, and I'm really going to go, you know, deep, deep with it. And I did. And every day, Every day I would go into this meditation and I would find myself beside the ocean and there would be Jesus, the spirit of Jesus standing there. And we will talk and each question I had a long list. Then on the third day, he had been answering all these questions I had. On the third day, Jesus said, let me take you to my father. And I said, really? So I was jumping up like a little girl and I was so excited. And we both walked down and we were, and then just going down, down, down. And then suddenly I saw this being of light. It was so huge. So I rushed down there and I started crying. I said, oh, this is what I've been looking for all my life. And said, I've always been here. So I'm glad you are here. So I said, oh, oh, what am I going to do? I don't ever want to leave this place again. Say, you don't have to leave. I said, but what about all the people waiting for me outside? You know, I have to go. So I said, no, I don't have to go there. Ask them to come in. I said, ask them to come in. So where are we? 
And I looked around and they told me, we are inside of you. I said, you are inside of me. And I started crying. Yeah. You are inside of me. I said, yes. That is what I'm enough means. That that connection, knowing how special we are, we're never alone. Even though in the valley of shadow of death, even whatever it is that is happening, it is happening to our physical side. The spirit in us is perfection. The spirit of who we are, we're here as human beings, but we are spirit. That is who we are. And we have to keep going back and staying in that spirit. That is the secret place of the most high. That is where to live in. And if we stay there, everybody else will follow because they too will find their own space, their own secret place. And when they're there, all of us connect from there. And yes. learned a lot since that time. It was after that that all this book, everything started coming on to me. That anything I want, I have it. Anything. And not because I need to work for it. And I do work. I do earn money. Not that I need to go and beg for it. Not, no. Because I already own it. So if there's any lack in every area of my life, that is where I go to for the solution. I don't go around asking people. I go back and I'm asking the God within my Christ. And I'm saying, where have I gone wrong? Because it's not, it, it, that is not me. That's not the truth of me. So if my friend is upset with me, I stop thinking about what she did wrong. I go in and say, what happened to my light? You know, what happened to that? Where did I go wrong? And I see that relationship as a water, really like, um, you know, a, a tap and that, you know, when you want to wet your garden and that um, pipe. So if it is mixing, if it just moves, you see, the water will not go through it the way it should. So if I move away from my source, that little moving away disrupts who I am. So I make mistakes, I, 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 things happen, I don't have money, my relationship is not good, my health is not good. So what do I do? I run back and I put that thing back. That is where the work is for me. So when I put it back, then I take the water of life and I keep drinking it eating it and getting all my nutrients and then the information I'm being given, I do it. Uh, ah, yes. Yeah. And, and that's, that memory is just where, where we can be. And, and I really feel like, um, right now would be just a magnificent time to take that lesson and invite people to get your book and to share with them where, where they can um, hear more about you know, everything that we've covered in this hug. It's just full of, of richness and, 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 and deep insight and a lot to take in. So I want to urge everybody also to, to listen again because huge truths of awareness and, and truth that you are enough and truth about the disillusion that, that we aren't and how to get around and in relationship with it, and then the deeper truth of that God within. A huge, huge, very important, very awakening, very empowering lessons were taught by Dr. D here today. So please listen to this again. And Dr. D, how can everybody get yeah, hold of you? I and get your book. One website for, just for the book, which is youareenoughbook.com. Uh, yeah. Um, you are enough book.com. 
And if you want to know more about all the other things that I do, it's healingcenterofchristinternational.org. Yeah, and sh Dr. D has some great telesummits, some groups, some I mean, amazing, amazing things going on, and uh, this is just a big year for her. I said with wonderful people like you. Yes. So, Dr. D, thank you so much for linking arms with me and Christ and God just to squeeze everybody in the world and sharing this hug with all of your community as well. And, and to your community, I just want to thank you guys, and I hope to get to know you all better and a big squeeze for me. And uh, everybody, this hug gets shared through you, for you linking, for you making your comments, for you telling us what you think and your insights. And we want to hear from you, from you joining the Facebook Hugs page. It's Hugs Talk with Antique on Facebook and we want to see you there and make comments and Dee will be there too and uh, really share this hug and this insight and this word from from God heart to heart with the world and um, you know we're international so it's it's really we can go anywhere in every place and and we already are so we love you guys thank you for being you you are amazing and you are enough yay oh. <laughs> thank you everyone